<laughs> I hope you are all doing well welcome. tonight. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are excited to be here. And uh, we look forward to tonight's message. Yep, just giving Don't everybody a minute. Good. Giving everybody a minute to log in. A minute or two or three. How are you doing, Mr. Wyckoff? I'm doing good. <laughs> Mrs. Wyckoff. <laughs> Are you ready for Alaska next week? I am. Hello, Bree. Bree's been to Alaska. She's yeah. She's actually seen what? the Northern Lights. Why didn't I know this? Of course I know, you have. I should know this about her. I know. Like, um, I she's think that's been, fabulous. She's been all around the world. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next word? Do you know that? Uh, I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something, something. Um, yeah. Something, something. We are going to hi, babe. We are going to Alaska. Hopefully, seeing some northern lights. Yeah. That's uh, that's my my jam. That's what I want to do. But that's if we goal. can't see northern lights, um, I'll cry. But besides that, <laughs> we're gonna do. We will cry because that was <laughs> that's the whole point of going to Alaska. We're going gonna... to endure yes. negative degree weather yes, for Northern well. Lights. So if we don't get to see Northern Lights, I'm going to cry. <laughs> it was it was minus 40 degrees the other day. We, we bought the gear. We bought the tickets. We're going no matter what. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. And we're going to do some dog sledding. Yes. And that'll be fun. And I'm going to snowmobile. The dogs will definitely be there. Whether the, whether the lights are there or not, the yes. dogs are definitely going to be gonna... there bark all the way down that trail and then uh we're gonna do chain of hot springs yeah 106 degree water in or, you know the snow filled area around us yes yes brie i declare that in jesus name we will see them i'm taking it she we're saw the northern it. lights in iceland iceland oh, oh you iceland oh you fancy nancy Just, going all the way to iceland when you say iceland you have to be like you almost need it. Iceland. <laughs> it's like got a Norwegian, like a Viking feel, like ice. <laughs> okay. Jill's trying to comprehend. Yeah. Iceland is my land. We'll we'll we'll, we'll try again. I don't know. Okay, we're we'll getting way off enough. way off base. Hey, we'll try Rona. Again. We'll How try you again. doing, Rona? Hi, Rona. Um, <laughs> this is uh, this is fun. You know, we like to have fun. Even when we're talking about not so fun topics. What? Yeah. This is an amazingly fun topic tonight that God wants to talk to us. <laughs> oh, it's a barrel of laughs. <laughs> see, how, see how I just switched it to blame. I'm blaming Papa God for this it's, topic. It's holiness. <laughs> hey, CJ. Um, yes. But there's, you know, there's a reason we're talking about loneliness and yeah. also a big deal. You know, we're not it's leaving you without deal. hope because that's what we don't do. Hey Gloria. How you doing? Hi Gloria. Yeah, it's loneliness is a big deal. We we've we all have battled loneliness at some point in our life. Some of us on a continuous basis and others in spurts. Uh, there's so many transitional times in our life where we experience loneliness. Um, so we're just going to go through um, and be lonely together tonight. <laughs> or not. We shall see. And, and hi, Ronald. How you doing tonight? What's up, Ronald? Um, so yeah, if, uh, if you are joining us for the first time, my name is Jill. And I'm Bray. And we are. Oh. The no, wine toss. <laughs> it only took us like I had to like wait. What we, we don't doing? rehearse anything, wait. so we've tried this uh, yeah. before on a Wednesday night, and we've messed this it up every great. single time. This is great. And uh, this is backstage pass. Welcome to backstage pass. Welcome, welcome to season two, pass. episode eight. Ooh. And episode Jill had eight. you had some crazy thing. Oh, one is the loneliest number is the title she titled this, well, he, and people were like. What is this? I know. I think you have to be about my age to even recognize that it's a lyric song. from a song from Three Dog Night. Is it in the 70s or 60s? I, or No, I think 70s. Okay. I listened to it and I was like, that's a creepy song. Well, we're talking about loneliness. Yeah, and the lyrics, I know. One is the loneliest number. 
Somebody's yeah. got to know it. Hi, Brenda. Do you guys know the song? Um, Brenda, my Oh, Bree, you know the song? Oh, Bree. I oh, was going to say, dare Brenda, you. you're young and you know that song. How see? dare you? Gosh. Oh. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that was where the title came from. <laughs> Ronald wants me to sing again. <laughs> you want to sing? No. no. <laughs> I charge money for that, Maybe Ronald. before the night's up. You know, you, charge, just, you just never know. You charge money for that, Ronald. You never know. <laughs> but uh, we're here with Backstage Pass every Wednesday, 6.55. We like to start off with some artist um, spotlights. We have not had any artists uh, give us their stuff. Yeah, you guys are and chicken. And so we're, we're chicken, lagging. Chicken, chicken. You are lagging and we're, we're bagging on you <laughs> right You're now. You're lagging and we're bagging. So, Hi, um, Brenda. It still can happen and we hope it will. <laughs> And uh, so then we go into a conversation. We start a conversation that we feel yep. God has highlighted to us. Well, what is this based off of? Is this biblical? It's not biblical. We don't do anything biblical. <laughs> <laughs> it, Jill always asks me, she's like, is that biblical? And now I'm like turning the tables. And then she does this. Hebrews, we don't do anything biblical. Hebrews 6, 19, where we are anchored behind oh, the veil. That's where got, hope is anchored behind the veil. We are. That's show off. backstage. You gave an address. You gave the backstage. Address. So we are, we're stepping backstage yeah. with our master creator to talk with him about the subject. So our prayer is that after we leave and we say toodaloo for the evening, that you will stay backstage with God and talk with him about uh, some of the topics uh, that, that, ha that we talk about or yeah. your own topics. He wants to chat with you. And so that's the whole idea. Yeah. We make him out sometimes to be so far away and he is right here and he's inviting us yeah. uh, to have this beautiful, intimate time with him uh backstage uh one one-on-one -on -one, and uh he wants to chat yeah and uh answer your questions and, and the, the key to this is when we go backstage with him he invites us but then it says you know the scripture says a anchored stay anchored with mm -hmm. him so it doesn't mean we leave like right. we just stay anchored backstage all the time with god so hello maria in colombia maria so Welcome, good to see Columbia. you on here and cj saw uh, your singing group in concert three dog night that yeah, singing so, group yes yeah, cj night. cj saw like, that group i like three dog night i thought they were did you good. see him in concert no i don't think oh, okay. i ever did you I, saw I've everyone seen else you've seen everyone else i i have i've seen <laughs> hundreds of concerts um i don't think i ever saw three dog night oh well, there you go. Um, CJ, you got one up on Jill. You got one up on me. That's so awesome. tonight we have people Hi, Donna. all the way from East Coast to West Coast and across the nation. Yeah. Hi, Donna. We're so excited that you're all here with us to tackle this subject of loneliness. And it's something that we all deal with or have dealt with. There is yep. not one human being that hasn't dealt with this. Um, and I'm sure Jesus is... Uh, has experienced it as well. Yeah, well, I know did. he did, right? He did. In the garden. <laughs> hey, can't you just hang out with me a little bit in my suffering? Yeah. Can't you stay awake with me? Um, where are my where are my friends? I'm feeling all alone here. Um, so Bray has or at uh, the cross, and everyone I mean he had he had thousands of followers, and then when you get to the cross, the most important part of his life and his ministry, and everyone abandoned ship. They're yeah. like yeah uh it wasn't anything they expected right so. god knows god knows our loneliness yeah. he knows what it feels like yeah. isn't that a pretty amazing thought really that our god knows um that feeling that so if you guys um if you guys want to comment like what uh what types of loneliness have you experienced or you're experiencing now you can kind of comment below and and uh, if we see something, we'll we'll talk about it. If we if we're not talking about it tonight, because loneliness kind of goes in in many different um, avenues. And we're and I've been talking to God about this, and that's why we're having this backstage pass, and why God said, I want you to invite everyone into this this process, loneliness, because it's a it's a it's a big, powerful word um, mm -hmm. for people. Um, and I I I think back at the times when when I felt lonely and I felt lonely even within my own family um, because I felt like no one understood me. And so even though I had my family, you know, I wasn't right. an orphan. 
but I felt like I just couldn't connect with anyone. Everything was like a fog, you know, like you're just kind of going through the motions. You go to conversations with people in the family and this can even go to friends or coworkers. I mean, just kind of, you can expand it wherever you're at, but you just kind of go through the motions of having a conversation with people, but you don't really care about that conversation or, or you think that they don't care about the conversation. Um, so you just you know, feel, you feel lonely. I have felt yeah. lonely in a crowd. Yeah. Um, many, many, many times um, felt like I didn't belong and belonging is a very big thing. So Huge. if you, you can be lonely within a crowd of people, if you feel like you don't belong, you feel separated somehow. Um, yeah. So loneliness isn't just being alone in my room all by myself, mm -hmm. although that is too, uh, can happen when we're alone, when we're isolated. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but we can feel alone when, like you said, you're with your family. Maybe they don't understand you and you're yeah. you can't have conversation with them or, you know, and you and you feel uh, loneliness in those ways, too. Yeah. And, and let's just tackle this. Uh, the difference between uh, being alone and loneliness. Um, they're two different things. So being alone uh, is when you're you're you are by yourself. I am alone. Like if Jill leaves this room, I'm alone, but that doesn't make me lonely. Uh, loneliness comes in the form of feeling abandoned or you're sad um, within your isolation. Yeah. You know, there, there, it's when that's when you feel um, and, and, and a lot of people get hit with that so, so dramatically that it, it causes suicide. Um, drug and alcohol abuse, um, all kinds of disorders come with loneliness. And coming on the heels of this, oh gosh, immense year of isolation, forced isolation on so many people, um, it, there's going to be a lot of aftershocks from this pandemic um, that's still going on today that people are feeling isolated. Some of you that are listening right now might be feeling isolated to the point where you're just lonely. I, I just need, I need someone in my life. And um, when you're lonely too, you, I think you feel, um, I feel, I'll, I'll just make it personal. Um, and the times that I've been lonely, I have felt like nobody understands me. Yeah. Like nobody understands where I'm at, what's going on in my life. And in that you feel even more lonely when you feel like nobody gets me, nobody understands me, nobody knows where I'm at right now. Um, nobody knows me. <laughs> there you go, Ronald. <laughs> That's a free one for you, Ronald. It happened. <laughs> it had to happen. Um, but that's oh, wait, it's true. Nobody loves me. Yeah, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody loves me. <laughs> we're, we're talking about two different songs. Anyway, um, you know, Brenda was saying you can feel lonely in the midst of your church family. Yes, that's right? a big place, guys. How many of us have just gotten lost at church, and um, and we feel like we have to fill some program or uh, try to insert ourselves into a home group or or some type of program the church has to try to fill that loneliness. And it just isn't going to work because we need deeper connections with people. It's great to get involved. And it's great for these programs. But a lot of times the church fails in this area of reaching the lonely. Um, and, and, and God is there for us, guys. He is so there. He's never going to leave us, never forsake us. So um, we have to point people back to God because he's the one that shepherds us. He's the one that comforts us. He's the one uh, that's going to be the end all and be all. And he's the reason for us to have breath and, and the reason why we're living today. But until we really understand that reason and getting to the crux of things and to the depth of, of where God wants us to go, we can still combat this word called loneliness. You know, you were talking about churches and, um, to defend churches a bit, you know, I, I do believe that churches are trying to, many churches are trying to create smaller communities by, by giving yeah. us the opportunity to do home groups. Um, I believe it's as much about what you bring yes. as what you take away. Right. 
So there ha the, the, if there's no expectations for deeper relationships and that isn't fostered and nurtured and um, supported, then everyone's going to walk away yeah. feeling, well, this was great. I learned, you know, I may have learned about a scripture, but I don't feel like I, yeah. I found somebody I can connect with. If you come with the same expectations, like I'm going to give, um, I hope to receive, but I'm going to give, then that's where I think real community happens when you're transparent and when you are um, wanting to uh, listen to people yeah. and hear them, not just like really hear them, yeah. lean in and, and find out about each other then I think it works. And then I yeah. think there are cell groups, home groups, whatever you want to call them, um, that work. Uh, I've also encountered people that are just stuck in the world of loneliness. And I mean that by, uh, we've tried to help many, many homeless people, um, but homeless people like to be homeless sometimes. They don't want the help or they play the victim mindset uh, to gain what they need, uh, but they will always want to remain homeless. So what I mean by that is some people always want to remain lonely and they'll play like that as a victim a card. It's like a choice. It's a choice. It's yeah. It's a choice. Yeah. So, so sometimes we can't help everybody because like Jill saying, it's a two-way street. Everyone's got to play their part. Everyone's got to come in like and that's Kim part said, of that's relationship. Like in any rela Kim just it's said that. relationships. It's like any relationships. So yeah. we, we, we all honestly have to show up and 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 pretending a lot of people are pretending to be something because they think that person needs me to pretend to be that in order for them to like me a lot of people are afraid of baggage we call this right baggage um and uh you know uh, in 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 the ministry world when you're in leadership uh people come in baggage they have they're bringing their baggage and sometimes you got to help them unpack that baggage. And it's like, you don't need to carry that anymore. And it, and it comes with, uh, it's not an overnight fix. Um, I think loneliness sometimes get caught up. Like if, if I can't heal you right now of this loneliness, then there's no, there's nothing I can do. And the problem with loneliness is, is a long game. And that's relationships, right? It's a long game. Long game, that's good. And, and uh, we, we, we got it. And that's the hard part, balancing this, because some people have been hurt so deeply that they're afraid to be vulnerable. Right. And then that causes them to stay in that victim area. And then you and then there's trust. There's so many factors. There's a lot of factors. They might think they don't have anything to bring loneliness. to the table. Right. Yeah. They might think like, well, yeah, what do I so have much. to bring to the table? Why would they want to listen to anything I have to say? And then. Yeah, I have to say right now that that's that that the best thing to do is to go back and find out what Christ says about you, who yeah. Christ says you are, because yeah. everything has to ha, has to have that standpoint. If we don't know who we are in Christ, if we don't if we don't recognize that, yeah, and the value in that, um, it will it we will wrestle with loneliness. We will wrestle with feeling separate. Um, that that'll be a difficult place. I, I do believe that it's, it's, it's like, we don't, we want, we don't want um, dependent relationships. We don't right. want, right. We want interdependent relationships, but interdependent relationships uh, involve healthy, healthy depend, uh, healthy interdependence. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And boundaries, right? you need healthy boundaries right. too, right. right? Right. So, um, yeah, I, and I believe God's yeah. word has a lot to say about who you are and yeah. about healthy boundaries and about all of that. And yeah. We Psalm, know his word talks about relationships. Psalm, uh, talks about loneliness all the time. Psalm 46.1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Um, Psalm 27.10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me, right? So these are what people are even in your family, we're just talking about being alone in your family. When my father and my mother forsake me, when they don't understand me, then the Lord will take care of me. And that's in Psalm 27, 10. Uh, Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always, even to the mm -hmm. end of the age. And these key words, always, 
And then he gives an example, even to the end of this age. Um, and then uh, you got John 14, 16 through 18. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And this is talking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, God is definitely yeah. our, our go-to when we're lonely. Yeah. He is our go-to. He is never going to leave us, never going to forsake us. He's always right there with us. Um, he, he wants that intimate relationship with you. He wants to be the first um, in yeah. your life. He wants, he's jealous for, for you, right? Yeah. And um, so when we can start from that foundation of, of recognizing God in, in the midst, right? Yeah. Um, that's the first, I think that's the first step to healing our heart of loneliness is really having that intimate relationship with our Papa God. Yeah. With our Papa God. We need it. He's our father. He's our husband. I mean, Jesus is our brother. We, we, we have all the relationships. We have the helper of the Holy Spirit. Um, we have all that relationship right there in the Godhead for us. Yeah. And once we get that, that wholeness through him, then we can, we can step out and shine his light through us. Right. We, we have value. We can, we can bring what we have to the table and you know god says he god's word says he puts the lonely in families yeah and so you know bray and i have lost a lot of family members um uh i've lost you know my grandparents my parents uh brothers your sister your father i mean all aunts and uncles they're all gone and um i have two siblings left and they're not in this area and um and so i have been blessed to be part of a church uh, when we were part of awakening mm -hmm. to feel like they were our family and it yeah. took some time i will tell you it wasn't overnight but as we invested in the relationships we invested time um we invested we invested our hearts blood into sweat that and tears into we did those it. relationships we, we built this this family church together with blood sweat and tears and literally. it was it was a small church and we yeah. became family and i i really do feel like many of our family are online with us right now, now. <laughs> and i just i do i feel like he put me in this family um so i would have brothers and i would have sisters and i would yeah. have dads and moms and grandparents and I know that's true for many of you. I know that's true even with our KWA family. Yeah. Um, Kingdom Writers Association. A so lot of times writers feel very separate and different and creatives feel that way, right? Yeah. And so we we have created a community with Kingdom Writers um, where people feel like they're amongst their people. Yeah. Right. And they are like understood. They belong, they they're can understood. Talk and we can, and we can support one another. Yeah. And I know that there have been best friendships that have come Amazing. out of that community. Incredible. Um, but it all starts with your foundation and your relationship with God who is with you. I, I'll tell you this. I think God's more excited when relationships are developed in a community than he is with what we produce. Agreed. You know, I think he's so excited mm -hmm. about us having these relationships. Like, you know, we're calling out Ronald and Kim and Bree and, and Donna and, and, you know, Maria and Columbia that we, that we haven't physically met, but we, we're, we're having this connection online now. And, and, and God is so excited about us interacting together than what Maria can do in Columbia about translating books from English to Spanish. He's more excited about the relationship, Maria, with us right. than what you can do um, or, or what, what we can write and produce like books or, or a ministry that we need, that we feel we need to start. You know, sometimes uh, I, I found that ministries fail over time because they're all about control and, and, and you can get lost in that. But it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's about relationships, guys. And that's, that's where we fill and, and defeat loneliness, where we fill the places where you're lonely through relationship, and it dis, dispossesses uh, all of that uh, negativity that the enemy loves to come and wreak havoc about. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I and I, I think Donna, I, I saw something scroll across about Donna, familiar? something about being yeah. familiar, like, yeah, it, it's, it's easier to stay. In it's the easier familiar. to stay the familiarity of it. Yeah. And that's the, the familiar. familiar spirit. And that's those things like all these negative things that happen to us. If they don't get displaced with the love of Christ and your identity and and community, then the enemy fills it with with uh with familiarity and that's a bad thing uh, if you get familiar with depression despair loneliness isolation um you know we don't want to get familiar with those things yeah and anything that god calls us to um and he calls us to relationships um it's not going to be easy no. it's not going to be comfortable it's going to no. stretch us i know donna no. we've talked about this too it's going to stretch us out of our comfort zones, especially for people yeah. um, who are introverted. And I'm, I'm quite gregarious, but I'm an introvert at heart. So uh, it does take, oh, I would just like to stay home and read my book <laughs> and write. And you know what I mean? It, it takes some effort to stretch yeah. beyond your comfort zone. But that's God. And that's God's like drawing us and taking us from glory to ever increasing glory. And I do believe, but even introverts, you don't need, we don't, you don't need a huge group. Introverts need right. people, right? You still need people. We right. still need people. I'm introverted in a lot of ways, but we still require that healthy relationship with yeah. other people. And, and, and we, Jill and I thrive with small groups compared to, you know, big church, you know, thousand people, you know, we can do those things. We can speak and, and bless everybody, but we really thrive with the intimacy of a room of, you know, uh, you know, half a dozen people, six people or four people or two people. And there are people who are, who are, who love big crowds, love big parties, yeah. recognize who you are and you know how you're designed yeah. and go after it, yeah. but do go after it. Um, it does take moving beyond your comfort zone. It does take intentionality. Um, and it's, it's not always easy, but it is always worth it. Yeah. It is always worth Kim, it. Kim, I see you say addicted to set to the sadness. Um, and, and yeah, that's so true. There's an addictiveness to it. And because I think it's a lot of times I find, and we go back to people being so hurt by someone or other people or a church or you know, a leader in there uh, that they respected hurt them, you know, um, you know, look at what happened with Ravi Zacharias, you know, that's a big fall, you know, and so many people looked up to him and then, and now they're completely hurt. And so then there's a trust issue. How, how do I trust the next leader in my life? You know, if you keep getting these types of pains and, and so with that trust and without it, um, I think God's inviting us to trust more and, and, to, and, and to keep stepping out in, in faith with him. And, and like Jill said, it's, it's messy. It's, it's, it's a long game, guys. And we're going to hurt each other. And it's a lot of times we do it on an accident. It's like friendly fire. You know, yeah. we, we were in a bad place and we said something wrong. And we didn't really mean that. And then we, the other person gets offended and they run away. Mm-hmm. You know, how many people have left church and never said goodbye? You know, when they should have just said goodbye. And, and this is the reason why I need to step away. I need to time out and walk through it a little bit better. But, and we've all done it. You know, Jill and I have, have just walked away from churches early on in, in, our, in our Christian career. <laughs> but you look back and you go, yeah, I did that. I played that wrong, you know, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, you, and I've tried to make amends with people in the past and you know, we just do the best we can, guys. And I think we need to be open and honest about it and real um, to help navigate it better, you know, because if we let anything allow the enemy to have a foothold in our life, it's going to creep in and, and loneliness is a big key. I mean, let's, let's go into some practical things like uh, you're widowed, you, you lost your love of your life after 50 years. And, and now you're alone. You still have family around you and you still have family calling you. But you know what I mean? They're now alone. And I'm talking about, you know, your mom. Right. And when we, when we lost dad, you know, 50 years of marriage and she went for eight years. Yeah. Um, she, you know, but you could tell 
She was just trying to appease trying everybody. To just trying to breathe each day without him. Yeah. And I know she felt very lonely and there was, um, there wasn't much I could do because the loneliness was on the inside. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So even when I came around her, it wasn't um, fitting the bill. And um, so that's, I mean, that's a whole other, a whole other thing, but that again, that's, that's where you have to start with the foundation yeah. um, of, of filling, filling that, that hole with God, because um, there's, there's nobody that can completely fill that yeah. void. You know it what takes, I mean? It's, it's so much effort involved. And I think in this fast food world, people aren't willing to, 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 to stay the long game. And even though we clamor for it, we want it. it, it it's, it's tough. And those of us that can do it, it can be done. And it's, and it's so beneficial for us. God purposefully designed this. Look at, look at God himself, you know, father, son, Holy spirit, right. no you get the Trinity. They, they, they're together. They're never separate. They're, there's no, you know, they're not going to experience being alone or isolated from one another. And yet Jesus did for that time period, he took that for us on the cross and he experienced that, that isolation um, in that brief moment in history. Um, but he knew the outcome of that God wasn't going to abandon him, that father wasn't right. going to abandon him, even though it seemed like it or he experienced it. But in, he knew it wasn't going to happen, right? So he understands where we're at. He understands our hurts and our sorrows and our pains. And that's an amazing God that can come down to our level yeah. and, and be human and God at the same time yeah. and, and partner with us and send the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said, you guys, I have to go so I can send you the, the comforter, so I can send you this amazing deposit inside all people. And even with the name Comforter, yeah, I mean that ought Come to tell you, that ought to tell you something. Um, so but good. you know, I, I do think we have a responsibility to see each other. Yeah, and um, I'm That's right good. now seeing Girly Ann Pearly from um, the Philippines right now joining us as well. Come what? On, Come on! Um, and, awesome. and uh, we love you. I know it's it's far far away, and we're so we're so grateful to see you here tonight. Um, but we, I think we, as, especially as God's own, right. Um, we have a responsibility to see each other, to see the, the lonely and the widowed and, um, yeah. and to, uh, to respond to them. And, uh, I think one of the, the most powerful things that, uh, God ever told me, um, is I see you and, yes. uh, that melted so my heart powerful. and told me that through another person, Man. I was feeling quite invisible yeah. and quite lonely. And I was thinking about, uh, that line from avatar where they say, I see you. Yeah. And, uh, I was just thinking about it all by myself in my car and thinking how wonderful it would be to truly be seen. And, um, I met up with a friend and uh, right, right after that, I mean, literally, I was on our, my way to see her. Yeah. And uh, she said to me, she said, God wants you to know um, that you're not invisible. And God says, and she leaned in real close, and she said, God says, I see you. Wow. I see you. Yeah. I see you. And it changed my life. And that, so if you are watching this yeah. tonight, God is saying, I see you. I see you. I know everything about you. I see you and I love you. And uh, that's the first and foremost, that's our foundation. And, uh, and then we, as his children, can also see uh, his other children and we can see the lost and we can see the lonely yeah. and we can, we can move, move in. So powerful. Yeah. Wow. Whew. Yeah, Kim. Uh, Kim made a comment there. Jesus uh, got a total demotion, but he took it on, right? He took that demotion for us. And um, yeah, he sees us, guys. He sees us. He's so for us. God yeah. sees us. He sent his son for crying out loud. He sent, it's, think of your own child that you would send to die for a people that you, you, you want to be with. Who does that? You know, the, 
this amazing, loving God that God decided to become human and, and, and sacrifice himself for us. That is to fill the loneliness, to displace it within us. Because without God, all of us, it, it would be pointless and meaningless to be here. And um, I, 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 I have, I'm recalling a story that um, uh, when we were pastoring at the awakening and, and, and we would see people, it was tough to, to see people because there was a program. There was, you know, this had to happen. This had to happen. This had to happen. This had to happen. But I remember God um, talking to me. He's like, slow down, Bray, slow down and pay attention to each person that's coming in that door. And those people are more important than your sermon, more important than the tithe, the offering message, more important than than the worship, more important yeah. than anything. They're, they're people. They're my people. And he's like, and, and, he, and you refer back to scripture to when he says, Peter, you know, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And, and that's, it, it, he said it three times. And, and Peter was getting so frustrated. Yes, Lord, I love you. Then what does he follow up with? After it's totally embedded in him that's what god wants to to hear that answer from us yes god i love you what does he say to us then feed my sheep then mm -hmm. take care of my sheep mm -hmm. and he didn't say now worship and give me a great offering message and a great sermon he says feed my sheep how do we feed each other through relationship through caring for one another through through acknowledging them going eye to eye saying i love you yes and i remember coming up to somebody and saying hi to them and I'm probably going to start crying <laughs> and and I asked her I said how are you doing she's like fine and I, I looked at her and I go no how are you doing and she just started bawling she just collapsed in my arms and she said thank you Bray for seeing me Jill, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Start singing or something. Oh, yeah, right. See each other. But it's so important, see each guys. Other. We have to see each other. You know, one of the things I love to do, um, we're talking about loving on one another as, uh, as Christians. But one of the things I love to do is to, um, to see those who are may not be saved, uh, to see those I don't know. Um, when I go to a store or a restaurant, yeah. um, if they have a name tag, I will call them by name. She does. I will look into their eyes and I will say, how are you doing? And I might comment about their cool tattoo yep. or the long day that they're working. Um, I will talk to them. And uh, I have had so many positive responses by talking with people. If I'm in a restaurant and someone is serving me and they don't have uh, a name tag, I say, I talk, give my order and I say, what's your name? Yep. What's your name? And then I think them by name. And um, it's, uh, it's something that's such a simple thing to do to see people and you never know where they're at. And they might be very, very lonely. And to have someone yeah. actually see them, yeah. recognize them, these people are working. And a lot of them are working for minimum wage or trying desperately to feed their families. You just don't know. And it's such a small thing. And, uh, and then to become a regular at a place where you go over and over. Yeah, that's and then good. you And then you just, you're friends now. Because, oh, yeah, they know your name, you know their name, you're yeah. talking about their kids. or Your what dad you. did that brilliantly when he went to the post office, right? My dad did he that. He knew brilliant. everybody at the post office. He'd purposely just figure out how to mail something and just go down there. You could drop it in the post office box, but he would go in there and say hi to everybody. You got to know all their names. And when your dad passed away, they were so sad. They, they were, were crying. so sad. They were crying. They sent him. Um, they sent him a card with everybody's signature on it when he got uh, when he was ill, and then when he passed away, um, and my brother had to go in and like literally had to go in and yeah. talk, tell them, well, he's gone now. Yeah. They started that crying because was... he had made such an impact on in such a a, a, a beautiful level. 
Yeah. And um, I think we let's we make an have, impact. We have the answer to people's loneliness. We have Jesus and we have Jesus in us. Yeah. Um, and people are going to say, why do you care? I care because Jesus loves you because God loves you and I love you. And, and yeah. that's the reason for this guys. And, and we need to care. And I think when, when we, you know, if one person gets this tonight, if we get this tonight and it just, and we keep teaching this through, through, um, through our own travels to the next person to be kind, to be, you know, the fruit of the spirit, to mm-hmm. all of those things, you know, loving, uh, you know, caring about each other and really looking at each other in the eye saying, I care about you. You matter. You know, what, yeah. what you bring to the table matters. God designed you perfectly. We start speaking identity and life into people. Yeah, come on. That fills, that fills the loneliness. That takes that out. And, and it gives them permission to actually seek after God's own heart yeah. and let him speak to them directly. Yeah. I love Isaiah 41, 13. He says, for I am the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and wow. says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Can you imagine, literally imagine God taking hold of your right hand, just like a, just like he, he is your daddy and you are his child. And he's yeah. like, don't be afraid. We're going to do this. We'll do it together. We'll do it together. I'll help you. Yeah. I'll help you out of your loneliness. I'll help you connect with someone that, that maybe you thought of, but didn't, you know, were hes- hesitant to do. Um, I'll help you connect with communities. Yep. I'll help you connect with people um, and I'll stay with you and I'll continue to hold your hand. Yeah. So guys, um, I, I just, I'm encouraged from tonight. Um, I, I think God's doing something brilliant in our lives. Uh, he's for us. He's not against us. He's not abandoned us. Um, uh, he's, he, we have the comforter inside of us. Um, and uh, he's there for us. He's never going to leave us. And those are key words. Never, never, mm-hmm. never, never. Let's, let's stay anchored in the truth of God's word that, that he uh, is not a liar, that he is the truth, um, the way and the life. And, um, and we can trust him and we can trust to bring him. the right relationships around us yeah. to bring the husbands and the wives to bring those who feel like sisters and brothers yeah. and mothers and fathers yeah. and, uh, and, and people who, uh, who get us I, and love us. I'd say tonight guys that, that, uh, we need to keep risking building relationships and it's a two way street. You can give all. And the other person can give nothing. That's okay. You gave all. And I think it's okay uh, for us to keep going after the relationships um, with people. And some people are going are gonna to get it and some people won't. But what God's saying tonight, it, it is not your fault. It's not your fault uh, if you're rejected by somebody else or you feel abandoned by another person in your life. It's not your fault. And God is there for us. And he's going to fill that gap all the time, all the time for us, guys. So let's stay connected. Let's stay in community, um, wherever you're at with your church, with your work, um, and with your family. Uh, Do the best you can and understand this is a long game. Got to go for the long game. Okay, guys, it's not going to be a fix overnight. You know, we've we've dealt with, you know, uh, friendless seasons for years. And um, it really takes uh, a long time, but it's worth it. It's worth it, guys. So worth it. And uh, love seeing the fruit of our friends having favor and blessings and then also being there to help them through their hard times. Uh, Because you're going to go through your blessings and your favor and your hard times. And that's when we need friends. We need we need that. So we're not alone. So we just bless you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for filling loneliness um, with your spirit, God. We just thank you so much for the relationships that you've given us and the relationships that are coming. And uh, we thank you for the relationships in the past. Even though they're not here now, we're thankful for the past. and We're thankful for the future. and We're thankful for now. And... um, you guys just stay behind backstage with Papa God right now. Keep talking about this. 
and uh, stay stay connected with him. Let him hold your hand. He's our source for everything. He's the living water and the living word. So blessings upon you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Love you.